try to take over this country. And he's written the best-selling book, Clinton Cash, that he'll break down, that's about to premiere at Cannes based on the New York Times best-selling book, uh, the most feared book of the presidential cycle, Clinton Cash. So what are they so scared of? Because it's not just having modern leftist brown shirts beat women up in California on TV and local TV defends it. I mean, that's, that's, that's in the news, Infowars.com. We have links to mainstream news. It's not just that. Now it's try to shut off the money to libertarian and conservative and constitutionalist groups. Don't give them tax exemptions or take them away, but then let Hillary get money from dictators. I mean, they're making their move in my view, but I want to ask Peter Schweitzer uh, his view on this and to ask him the question, is liberty winning or is tyranny winning in this in this football game? I mean, how would he how would he boil this down uh, when we look at the different forces that are at play here? Peter, thanks for coming on with us. Hey, great. Thanks for having me, Alex. I always enjoy being on with you. You bet. I think this is your second or third uh, visit with us. Let's talk about Clinton Cash and now turning into a film and why this is so important. Well, I think it's important for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, we follow the money. Uh, this is something that you would expect mainstream journalists to do. They talk about money in politics all the time. But the fact of the matter is no one has gone and dissected who gave the Clintons money, why they gave them money, and when they gave them money. And by the way, Alex, what's I think so troubling and compelling about the Clinton case is we're not just talking about Wall Street or big oil or the traditional sources of money in American politics. What we're talking about is foreign governments, foreign dictators, and foreign financiers. This is a way where foreign entities have figured out a way around U.S. laws that prevent them from giving money to political candidates. They can now put it in the Clinton's pockets through speaking fees or give it to the Clinton Foundation and curry favor and access that way. And then, of course, I know Breitbart, other than Drudge, is probably the main victim of uh, Facebook censorship. We have enjoyed it as well, uh, where we send out a, a meme that's PG rated and, and they suspend us for three days. Uh, the, the founder of Pirate Bay came out on Monday and said, look, Facebook is a multi-billion person nation and its dictator is Zuckerberg, who is anti-free speech. And that's a leftist saying that about Zuckerberg. I mean, this is something everybody should be worried about. Yeah, I mean, control of the media and who really determines what gets uh, a shown as trending on Facebook, what's shown on the evening news is vitally important. And, and here's the problem, Alex. It's one thing if there were some balance, but just look at this issue of the money flowing to the Clintons. Uh, we talk, for example, in Clinton Cash, we have two chapters on the fact that the Clintons got $145 million from investors in this small uranium company that needed Obama administration approval to sell uranium in the United States to the Russian government. Okay, that's an important story. And in fact, even the New York Times ran a 4,000 word front page piece confirming all of it. They ran that piece last year when Clinton Cash was published. Hillary Clinton has not been asked a single question about that by any mainstream media reporter. You would think if there was a 4,000 word front page investigative piece in the New York Times on Bernie Sanders, on Donald Trump, on Ted Cruz, whoever you want, they would be asked that question. But somehow with the Clintons, they never get asked these very basic, simple questions about follow the money. And it's basic sovereignty issue. I mean, what is the elite thinking? You've written for some of those powerful publications out there that the elite you know, go by Foreign Affairs, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, Los Angeles Times, National Review. And, and what I think is important about your leadership at Breitbart that I really have, have enjoyed seeing develop is that you guys are just really going for populism and the truth. America is being conquered right now. Yeah, it sounds sensational, but they're announcing world government. I mean, the truth is this is happening and we have a choice to make. Are we going to be ruled by multinationals and the Saudis and the communist Chinese and all these combines, or are we going to be ruled by the vote in this republic? And I just think that, you know, thank God your book uh, has been used as a roadmap the last year, now about to be a film, uh, uh, now being released, uh, to, to force this serious debate about is there any line in the sand for the establishment? Because, you know, even when guys like you, I don't want to say you're establishment, but you're, you know, a, a, a con conservative, you know, well-known, uh, you know, guy that you know the establishment listens to, I mean, what are they saying at this point? I mean, because I know the military, I talked to high-level brass who are currently in, they are freaking out about what's going on. Has America reached a tipping point in awakening is what I'm trying to get at. 
Well, yeah, I think there's a lot of interesting things going on in this election. Uh, you alluded to it earlier. I mean, I have not been, uh, you know, a completely rabid, uh, you know, Trump supporter. There's some things that he said that I don't necessarily agree with, but it is impossible to ignore the fact that the issues that he is raising on issues like sovereignty, on issues relating to the American middle class, that they are no longer being represented in Washington, D.C. anymore. And you could say the same thing with Bernie Sanders. I don't agree with Bernie Sanders on probably anything, but you've got to give him a lot of credit. He is touching on these very same themes. And this is a trend that we've seen, Alex, over the last 20 to 30 years. It's been written about by everyone from uh, Harvard faculty members to uh, conservatives and libertarians. We have a trend in this country that many of the elites in the United States today in both political parties, frankly, have more in common and have a closer identity with elites in other countries than they do with people in their own country. They feel that they have more in common with elites in Brussels or in Beijing than they do with the elites that live in Des Moines or Bakersfield. And that is a problem. I want to talk about the film with you and how important it is premiering in Cannes. I mean, this is, this is a big deal uh, because if folks think, you know, your book's already almost brought down uh, the Clintons and others and exposed this, this destruction of our sovereignty, this, this takeover, imagine it being a blockbuster like 2016. Hopefully they won't, you know, arrest you or the filmmaker uh, like they've done uh, Dinesh Souza. And then I want to talk to you about the EU proposed government ID to use the Internet in the uh, new European Commission draft report, because this is a dictatorship, they just issue these reports and then they bounce them around and they become, quote, law. So, so, so they're dropping the hammer. But first, let's talk about the film. Yeah, uh, the film is really basically uh, an attempt to make the material in the book more accessible to people. I mean, we get the fact that people are busy, busy, people are working hard, and when they get home from work, they don't necessarily want to dive into a, you know, several hundred page book that's got multiple footnotes. So what the film does is take some of the material in the film, there's some new stuff as well, and it encapsulates it and presents it in a very visual and powerful way. And what's interesting about this, Alex, is the earliest reviews of this film uh, were not by conservatives, people that dislike Hillary Clinton. Uh, it was by MSNBC. It was by Salon. Uh, it was by The Guardian in the UK, which is a, a left-wing paper. They all gave the film favorable reviews uh, because they feel the information is compelling and powerful, and you can do not deny the fact that the Clintons are cooperating and working with elites that are backing warlords in Africa or engaged in some very nefarious behavior. Well, that's the thing about Hillary. Other places around the world. From a leftist perspective, she's what you'd call a super right-wing warmonger, profiteer, gangster, like Trump says. I mean, there's nothing liberal about this woman except her rhetoric. Yeah, though the word that I often hear uh, from Bernie Sanders supporters that I would agree with is that she is a corporatist. Uh, that in other words, she melds her interests and in American national interests with the uh, interests of favored corporations. And that would be corporations that put money in their pockets. So she's going to carry out a policy in Africa, for example, that's not necessarily based on our national security interests or in the interests of human rights, but what's best for mining corporations that have put a lot of money in the Clinton pockets. And uh, that's something that I think a lot of conservatives and independents would uh, have problems with. And it's certainly something that uh, Bernie Sanders supporters sure. would have a problem with. Now, there's Breitbart.com. People can go see the trailer there. We're going to play the trailer when we come back at the start of the next segment, right out of the break, viewers and listeners. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but Peter Schweitzer, who heads up Breitbart.com, one of the biggest independent news organizations in the world. Let me ask you this when you got a break in 60 seconds. I mean, I wouldn't call you an establishment guy, but I mean, you're, uh, I mean, I'm going to go over your bio here, but you're a prestigious guy, I've worked with some of the, you know, top, uh, you know, TV production, you name it, some of the top uh, publications, people listen to you. Would you say that other people in, in the more intellectual you know, a level of discourse are now starting to wake up to what's happening? Because, you know, you supporting Trump and, and things like that's pretty hardcore uh, in the traditional paradigm. Well, I would say that, um, yes, there's a lot of disruption uh, among establishment circles that are surprised at what's happening. Um, certainly, uh, you know, the predictions a lot of people have made uh, have been proven to be wrong. Uh, but I would say even at Breitbart, look, we have a very vigorous debate. Um, you know, I'm a senior editor there, the executive chairman, Steve Bannon, uh, Alex Marlowe, the editor in chief. We have vigorous debates on these issues. What I find so interesting is a lot of the focus is on the personality of Donald Trump. Stay, stay there, Peter Schweitzer. We're going to be right back 
to talk about this straight ahead in the trailer. Out of the break. Stay with us. Alex Jones back live. Clinton Cash Movie. Dot com is the website. Here is the trailer for the film that opens in Cannes this weekend. Greetings from Washington. I want to thank all of you for your work to root out corruption that weakens economic development, feeds black markets and organized crime, and undermines the promise of democracy. I believe in the oldest adage in American politics, which is follow the money. A new report today claims that the Clinton Foundation gives about 10% of its money that it raises to actual charities. Enormous amounts of money have flowed to the Clintons from foreign governments, foreign financiers, and businesses. The Clinton Foundation dropping its self-imposed ban on collecting funds from foreign governments and entities. You have a foreign corporation or a foreign government that wants something from the State Department while Hillary Clinton is Secretary of State. They will make a large payment to the Clinton Foundation. That will be followed by favorable action on their behalf. They've created a model for massive self-enrichment that allows you to go into so-called public service, but get extremely rich at the same time. Oh, yeah. I, I got to pay our bills. Before we had to worry about money from Wall Street and big labor, now we have to worry about it coming from around the world and infecting our politics. With the Clintons, nothing is sacred. Everything is for sale. But we are the ones who are paying the price. Maybe, just maybe, the American people are tired of being sold out. I can't wait to see it. A really smart film because I've read the book, I guess, six months ago, about four or five months, six months after it came out. Congratulations. Uh, on what you put together here, uh, you were f finishing up on the whole Trump situation and how really what he's saying is mainline Americana, but people get caught up in the personality, uh, Peter. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at some of the positions he's taken, whether it's on, uh, you know, free trade or the erosion of the middle class, uh, these are hardly, you know, radical right wing views. These are centrist views that are shared by some mainstream Democrats. And I think that part of the challenge is because of uh, Trump's personality, sometimes those issues get lost in the shuffle. So I think it's going to be very interesting. Uh, it's going to be very difficult for Hillary Clinton, I think, to paint Trump as this sort of right wing conservative, because certainly that is not um, how you would classify Trump, I think, on the on the philosophical spectrum. And to be specific, uh, I know Kansas was going on the last week or so. I guess it's already premiered. Where where will we be able to see Clinton cash next? So uh, it's in the middle of uh, negotiations for distribution deal. There's going to be a theatrical release sometime in July. Uh, and then we will be on a television uh, network. I can't say which one, but expect to see it on uh, national television uh, sometime this summer. Well, it needs to go viral. And uh, folks, this is a war. I don't have a stake in this film except my children's future. That's why all these big films, I have them on to promote them. Because if it gets in 20 theaters and sells out for a week, then it gets in 100. Then it's 2,000. And then we change the world. And, and and look, it's not just the Clintons. It's across the board. The, these leaders are taking foreign money. And the left says, get rid of Americans' right to give. Well, first, let's get rid of foreign groups coming in and dictatorships. And, and you're absolutely right. The left has no wiggle room here. I mean, if they're for shutting down giving domestically, they got to shut down foreign money. I mean, that's treason. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, that's one of the few consensus points we have left in American politics, right? The Supreme Court in 2012 heard a case where two Canadians challenged the constitutionality of the law that says foreigners cannot give to political campaigns. The Supreme Court came back nine to zero and said, no, this law is completely constitutional and makes great sense. When was the last time the Supreme Court agreed nine to Never. zero on anything? So this is a consensus point in American politics, but the Clintons have found a way sure. around it. So if you're a foreign dictator, you cannot give to Hillary's presidential campaign, but you can pay Bill an inflated speaking fee and put that money in his pocket. I mean, it's even worse than giving to the campaign. Check to the Clinton Foundation. Well, I mean, in closing, Trump has come out and said that she's going to jail now. And obviously she does all these crimes. They're legion. But I mean, it's naked. If somebody at the FBI takes $5,000 from a foreigner and doesn't even do anything for the money, they get indicted in life in prison and they should. That's espionage. I mean, they're openly involved in espionage at every level. I mean, well, how, I how is she not arrested?
Well, you look, Alex, at the recent uh, cases of political prosecution, Governor McDonald in Virginia, Senator Menendez in New Jersey, they were charged with far less evidence than exists. The attorney the general of Texas. Ex yeah, attorney general of Texas. There's a former governor of Alabama who's in jail right now. They were charged on this precise thing of taking money and doing favors in return. And the evidence that I've looked at is far less compelling in, in any of those cases. The attorney so general here is going after Obama. He's at a party, talks about a company he was at a year before, says he thinks it's a good investment. They've indicted him. For yeah. It's just crazy. Dinesh D'Souza's in jail for nine months. Hillary's not in trouble. Peter Schweitzer, Breitbart.com. Clinton Cash, the movie, folks. Very exciting. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Alex. Wow. We're on the march. The Empire is on the run. And the next big salvo's coming up. Roger Stone in studio straight ahead.